I am going to have to cover here is that I've got my board designed and laid out. Um, I did that myself for the first time, uh, and I might do a little video at some point talking about that. But there's the board, and tonight we're going to have uh, Angie Populate. She's been uh, and she enjoyed the champ, so she's going to start helping me out. So I'm just going to try and film her working on it. We'll try and show you guys some of how we're populating this board. So this is uh, more of the Tweedledee Deluxe that we're building from that scavenged Philco. Uh, so enjoy. All right, well, Angie's going to go wild here now. She's got, uh, we've got a bunch of our components here. She's got resistors over there. In fact, I might want to try and put the resistors up on the table for you so they're a little bit more accessible. Okay. I've started to organize myself a little bit better. So I've got actual bins for things. I um, helped. Yes, she did. <laughs> All right. Oh, geez. Wow, I didn't help with this one. All right. So. Get this so it doesn't fall off. Okay. Um, if we need to slide this a little bit more just so, so this is only my second one so we'll see how this goes well yep. fast forward a bunch of stuff as i'm trying to find stuff and yep. stuff and make stuff so i would just suggest doesn't matter which side you choose from start from one and move your way across or start from that side and move your way across that way okay um and i don't remember i don't know if you'll need the pliers much but you'll definitely need the cutters and you will well also. i use these things to bend oh okay and then you'll have this, right? okay. Maybe? i usually I just know. know these are my fingers but you oh. can use the pliers if you want to as well it's up to you Alright, I have to remember how to do this. It's been a little while. So, okay. which side do you want to start with? I'm going to go left to right because right. I know I'm reading and all. Alright, so. The, uh, English language. So, most of the capacitors are in here. So, these were, I'm just going to shovel up. I think that's the first one. It smells horrid. There's probably plastics and stuff coming out here. There's one of them. I think that's the first one. And this is some of the other ones. Alright, that's the 25 UF microfarad. Mm -hmm. So here's the fun part. This screen has that you probably can't see. I'm colorblind. So when they have like red and bl with black lettering, it's kind of hard for me to see it. Or black with green lettering. So I have to have fail double check and make sure that I grab everything that's right. That'll be fun. Okay. So here's the 25 microfarad. Now this says 50. Oh, that says 52. Just kidding. I just need my glasses. fit perfectly like some of the ones we've had because we've been because uh, uh, we've been uh, we did these manually I did this manually so uh, this will be fun okay. oh is that when it's not manually it's like better off well no I mean it just might be more precise the exact hole size I didn't I don't even know how to it may not fit super well in there just because of the um, size of the capacitor and sometimes you have to manually do it anyway. So, all right. One of the things that uh, I do try and do is keep the actual capacitance at the top. So if somebody's changing, they can read it. Okay. Now, I don't know, does it say it up here? Nope. Oh, okay. So, it's not the other world. But I can write now, it on there with a pen. Make sure you're putting the negative and positive correctly on these. So electrolytic capacitors have a negative and a positive, and you are correct. I'm just, just remember mentioning it. You can see the little dimple on it as yep. well. So. I can rebend this if you think that that's necessary, but it won't hurt it at all. It shouldn't. You don't want to like bend the metal over and over and over and over again, but like twice it shouldn't hurt it. Um, leads after being bent enough times can get stress and break, but you're talking about four or five, six times if you're just bending it twice because you wanted to adjust it a little bit differently. should be completely fine. Up to 
you? Do you feel like that's coming through okay? Yeah. Okay. My question so is, now is what you want to do? Because I don't remember. Yes, they, they will. Now you want to bend those. It doesn't matter which way, either inward or outward, and then later we can cut them after we've soldered them. But for now, just like that should be okay. okay. So it's not really in the middle. This is almost touching that. Is that a problem? That should be okay. It's it's more of the how anal you want to be, but because you've already bent those leads a couple of times, we probably don't want to keep trying to bend them because that would reduce I want their to be anal. longevity. Okay, so now I need a, oh, I can't see, 100 resistor 10 watt. Is that right? So actually, if you look at it, it's a stack. It's 100, 150, but you are correct. So I've got those up in here. The ones that's not, that's not labeled? Because they were just for this build. I don't, I'm not going to be putting... And this one, somehow I ordered three instead of two because I don't know how to do math. So there's three of the 100s there. We'll have an extra one we don't need. And then there's the one of the 50. So, so these are all going in this one? Yes, and they're stacked on top of each other. Oh. So the thing about this that's a little different is that um, you, all that is needed in this spot is 250 ohms. And when you put resistors in series, you know, one after the other, they end up just, uh, fine. They end up being um, added up. So um, is there not I'm not sure why Howard Dumble decided to go this way, but is there not such a thing as a 250? Oh. There are yes, but this is the, we're just trying to kind of repeat what he did. I think it might have been more than anything to allow for some power handling. Are you sure they didn't just run out and then they're like, ah, oh, we'll just use these. He might have, put it on but there. I'm just somewhat trying to replicate what he did. So, so these made of ceramic. They're yes, they're called they're wire wound ceramic. So true. there's basically the idea is that they wind a wire around a thing a whole bunch of times, and after a certain number of windings, it'll be that way. So the, if you look at the picture, the bottom one is in the top part up here because that's where the, the main output of the tube will go to, or the, the power yeah, tubes. The bottom one is in the top? Is in the top, but the, but the bottom, sorry, the bottom resistor in the stack uh -huh. is going into the top hole. The top resistor in the stack goes into the bottom hole. So you have to kind of jumper these resistors together. Where do these go? Where do the so others go? They're, going in they're the going to go like this. Mm -hmm. And the way this will work is, like I said, this top one goes in, then you will connect these two together here, and you will connect these two together here. By soldering them? We will solder them, yes. For the, for the short term, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just kind of fold them over each other and wind them around each other a couple times and snip them off, and then we should be able to solder them after that. You just see that, that you kind of- so tacky, okay. Well, this is just, again, we're just re reproducing what was done. Jumpering all three of these together. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. All right. It doesn't matter too much, and you just want 100, 100, and then 50 on the top. Yep. Now what is this jumper to then? That will jumper up the to top. this guy, yes. Uh -huh. And this bottom two, and then that top one will go straight back into the bottom after you've right. wired so those together. Twist together. Hold on. I do want you to do that, but I was more thinking you want to get them as close together as possible, like that. And I'm trying to explain that thing. I think you want them folded open almost, wind them around so that they get a nice how about you do one? All right. so you I will can show, show you one. What you're wanting pull this guy to do. back out. So effectively, my idea is we want to get these guys. And do a couple of twists around like that. Then we can just put a little solder, oops, a little solder on that. And after the solder's on, then we can snip those off. Does that make sense? Okay. Then we can go ahead and put that guy back in the way you had it. Because you want to get a nice physical tight winding of those wires, but I also don't want them sticking clear out in a funny way. Actually, to do that, you might want to almost do what I did before, which is have this out. Yeah. Oh, I don't like the feel of this. It's like what the ceramic it's like rubbing. A chalkboard. <laughs> mm. 
It's making my teeth hurt. Ooh, Mallory, see Mallory see must see a rabbit outside. All right, do it again. You want me to do it again? All right. Yeah. So what I did was I first looked at these two and I crossed them over so I could get a sense of where they'll go. But then I pull them up and I started winding them around each other. Like that. Bingo. Now, is there gonna be any now issue with these heat? guys are gonna move these other way. Well, so these ceramic wound resistors usually do need a little bit of room around them, but in this case, because they're way overrated, the actual Fender original design, I think, only used a five watt here, if I remember right. Or maybe it's 10 watt, but there's a single 250 ohm 10 watt resistor. Instead, we're sending it through three separate ones, so it's about a third the heat, if that makes sense. Now, another thing you want to be very careful of when we do this is to not let that wire touch the other wires, because if they do, then we would short out the connection. But. That's it. Tight fit. Alright, and that looks like that's good. We will solder that up and connect them. What we might also just put just a small amount of silicone in between these to just hold them in place so they can't move once we're done. Alright, there you go. Of course that's gone to sleep now. Alright. Next. Next up is a series of three in a row. Now these guys. Need it. Three thirty-three microfarad. It's just thirty-three, not three thirty-three. I need three. Oh, three of them. Gotcha. Never mind. Three microfarad. I thought you were reading the number three hundred and thirty-three. <laughs> all right. So. One's been all bent. Funky. Yeah, they do that for shipping, but then you just straighten them. Back Which out. is just annoying because we already know that we don't want to bend them a bunch. Yeah. So these resistor or these capacitors are Kemet, which is a fairly well known brand that's decent quality as far as I know, or very high quality. The original amp used ruby gold caps, but I can't find them anymore. I don't think they're made anymore. So I don't want to go on a hunt for new old stock stuff. The galactic gumshoe? What? Ruby. Oh, okay. Oh, you dogs. You're pretty silly. There's something going on at, Mary, at, at the park. Yeah, there's a park nearby where they have concerts at. And I think there's something going on because I hear... Oh, it might be movie night. They might be doing... They might be doing Rogue One. Mm -hmm. Alright, so do I want to... Push it down so it goes like this. No, you actually want a little bit of room with the bend there. It allows for a slight flexing and motion without it, uh, in putting pressure and potentially breaking leads on those. And again, like I mentioned before, we may put a little bit of uh, now, do we, stuff do to anchor it down. Now, do space between that and the board? I did intentionally space them as best I can. Oh, no, no, the capacitors don't get super hot, so touching the board is fine. Almost all components touching the board should be okay, except some of these very heavy wattage capacitor this or resistors. Quite straight. That's okay. All right. For you. Just, I just want it visible so that whoever's doing maintenance on these in the future can see what the capacitors are and replace them easily. This will be inside no, of a chassis. Mean, these aren't straight. The eyelets. Oh, well, that's why I have this. Oh, the eyelets aren't straight? Yeah. Well, I use graph it's paper. Kind of crooked like that. Okay. Just enough for my analism. Well. But that's okay. We will survive. We don't have a love. I know we'll stay alive. My husband doesn't necessarily like my humor. Let's <laughs> say I didn't like it. It's corny. It's corny? Okay, I don't use the word corny. The only thing that's corny is your vocabulary. Okay. One, two, three, that are not even. All right. What's next? Oh, they're not even. Can I miss this way a little bit? What's next? Um, 
these two thingies. Uh -huh. 4K7. Okay. Is that what these are? No, no. these aren't orange. Those are resistors. Uh, so these are going to be higher watt ones. So I've got some 2 watt 4K7 there. How do you know it's supposed to be 2 watt? It, yeah, it doesn't say on that. I think I looked at the other resistors from uh, the existing amp. And I just ordered some of those. Now, do I watt. need to test these to verify that they are correct, or do we just trust um, that they are right? You can tell by looking at the stripes, but we could also get, I could go get my... Will you grab me some scissors? Yep, you've got... Alright. Those will cut that probably just fine. I will go get a multimeter, but um, it's not a bad idea to measure them. 